Hey everybody, day two, project two. Before we do, I cannot believe on project one, the pizza box sculpture challenge, how many of you are sending me images of what you're making? Please keep sending them. It's been really cool to see what you've done with that idea. Now for this one, I've got pretty much a three part project because we're gonna make a watercolor painting. But again, the problem is, right? You might be at home and you don't have the supplies I have on this table. And if you don't, don't worry, I'm gonna help you. What I love about watercolor painting is that I can do it just about anywhere and it's super transportable because it dries fast and the supplies can be super small. When I traveled, this was in Amsterdam at a bakery. I stood outside and painted this. The paper is super thick, it absorbs fast, dries fast. We are going to make our own watercolor paints from scratch. It's very simple to do. I almost guarantee you have these materials at home. Let's get started. We're gonna head upstairs to the kitchen so I can show you all the materials you need to use. All the ingredients or supplies we're gonna need laying out, so let's take a look. First thing, obviously a muffin tin. If you don't have a muffin tin, you could use a paper cup, just keep it simple. The next thing might be handy is baby oil, believe it or not. What I like to do, because I don't want them to necessarily stay in this tin until I'm done using them, because they'll last a really long time. So I like to wipe just a little bit of baby oil in each one, makes them pop out. If you don't have baby oil, you could get away with like a cooking spray, but it just kind of gets gross. But anyway, next we've got food coloring. I like the gel food coloring and I have uh, some neon colors as well because honestly I love baking and I just have a lot of this stuff around. But even if you just have the basic, you know, blue, yellow, red, it's perfectly fine. So that's what we'll need. As well as a couple measuring spoons. Typically, you know, for the most part, we're gonna be sticking with this tablespoon. Next is gonna be cornstarch. Gonna need some of that. We're also going to be needing some baking soda. And then we're gonna need some vinegar and then some light corn syrup. If you have heavy corn syrup, that'll work as well. And then we're going to need like a beaker or some sort of measuring cup. The key is we're gonna to need to pour this while we stir. So make sure that you can pour it without making a huge mess. And the last but not least, I just had some like wooden skewers that you could use. You could do uh, I mean, anything, right? Into the spoon, you've got popsicle sticks, something like that. Once I pour everything in here, I'm gonna to wanna to stir it till I mix up the food coloring. So something like that. Okay, first step, the fun step. Let's get to it. First step, we're gonna mix up the vinegar and the baking soda, which in my opinion is probably the coolest part of this whole entire thing. This is where we're gonna use the measuring spoons. Uh, I'm gonna use a tablespoon for this. So if I put in four, which is what I'm gonna use, four tablespoons of baking soda, I'm then gonna use two tablespoons of uh, vinegar, okay? What's gonna happen next is gonna be really interesting. The baking soda is in all essence a base. And then we have the vinegar that is our acid. And when these two combine, a chemical reaction occurs. Basically, and, and keep it simple, the baking soda then is taking an extra proton from the vinegar, the acid, and then they're going to react. And what you get is carbon dioxide and water, which is what makes it bubble, right? If you ever created one of those uh, volcanoes for like a school project or whatever, we're gonna get the same reaction here. And so I'm, that's why I have the tall beaker. You're gonna to wanna to keep stirring this because it's going to get pretty thick really fast. Next step is the cornstarch. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch into this. Last but not least, we're gonna add the corn syrup. And I'm only gonna add a half teaspoon to this. So I have my mixture ready to go. Now, as it sits over here, it's going to get like a crust on the top. It almost kind of feels like a thick paste. And if it does, you just kind of crunch it up, re-stir it, and you're good to go. Next though, I'm going to go ahead and put, like I said, a thin, 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 very thin layer, uh, just kind of rubbing against the walls in the bottom uh, with the baby oil. That way they'll just pop out really easy later. Yeah. 
All right, we have everything in the tray ready to go. Next up is where I'm gonna use either this like wooden, you know, if you have some sort of wooden stick or something else that you can stir with, like a popsicle stick, and the food coloring. My rule of thumb is six drops um, into each container of what color I want it to be, and then I'll stir it up until it's properly mixed. So I've mixed up all of my colors and it is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite things about this, how colorful it is. Next step, I need to let it dry. It's gonna take probably about 24 hours, 12 to 24, depending on where you put it. If it's in a really dry place, it'll go faster. But I need them to be basically like a thick, dense cake before I can pop them out. Then we'll go ahead and get started on making watercolor paper from scratch. That'll be the next video coming up. So be sure to tune in.